Welcome to Satan is My Superhero. In this episode, we travel south of heaven where hell awaits to spend seasons in the abyss and rain and blood with our undisputed attitude that God hates us all in the Christ illusion. Without divine intervention, we see a world painted flood in repentless Diabolus musica and tell the story of Slayer's debut album. Show no mercy, mercy, mercy. In 1981, Huntington Park, California guitarists Kerry King and Jeff Hanneman met at an audition. The duo quickly realized they were into the same stuff. What about Satan? I love Satan. Hang on. Do you mean the new wave of British heavy metal band or a mythical demon? Both. We just formed Slayer. Living just around the corner was like-minded bass player and singer Tom Araya. I think they both suck. You just joined Slayer. All they needed to create the loudest, heaviest, fastest and most satany band ever was a double kick-ass drummer. Then suddenly, there was a knock at Kerry King's door. Pizza delivery man. 16-year-old pizza delivery man Dave Lombardo had been told there was another long-haired, disreputable type in the area. Ew, metalheads are so gross. So the plucky... Pizza delivery man... ...went and introduced himself. Hi, I'm Dave, a double kick-ass drummer. After an intensive audition process... Is your house walking distance from mine? I live on this street. You just joined Slayer. The original, the classic, and the most persistent Slayer lineup was complete. <laughs> Patreon delivery man. What? You became a patron at patreon.com slash Satan is my superhero, so now you get to receive exclusive bonus content. So where do you want it? Um, right here, I guess. Oh, okay. Here goes. <clears throat> Welcome to Satan is My Superhero. So cool, so cool, so cool. <clears throat> in this episode, we... What are you doing? The exclusive bonus content? Get off my doorstep, weirdo. Well, you know what? I'm just going to do the exclusive bonus content and you can just listen or not. It's up to you, okay? Because you already paid for it. <clears throat> Welcome to Satan is My Superhero. So cool. In this episode, we will... In 1983, while opening for the band Bitch, Slayer impressed the CEO of Metal Blade Records with their cover of Iron Maiden's Phantom of the Opera. I actually have a bootleg recording of that show. The Phantom of the Opera is there inside your mind. That is not a bootleg recording of Slayer covering an Iron Maiden song. How can you tell? Because it sucks. The band recorded the track Aggressive Perfecta for a Metal Blade compilation album and from there were offered a no money record deal. Hey guys, we've been offered a record deal. I'm gonna buy a Ferrari. I'm gonna buy a pony. Well, this is awkward. The band had to pay for the recording with money bass player slash lead singer Tom Araya got from his job as a fully trained respiratory therapist. Hi, I'm Tom. I'll be your respiratory therapist today. We'll start with some simple respiratory exercises. Now, follow along with me. Take a deep breath, and then... Blasting our way through the boundaries of hell! They also borrowed money from guitarist Kerry King's dad. Hey, Dad, can I borrow some money to record an album? I didn't know you were in a band. Yeah, Slayer. We practice out in the garage every weekend. That's music. I thought you were murdering hitchhikers with chainsaws out there. Oh, my God. I'm so relieved. So in November 1983, with a budget of $1,500, the band was able to hire Trax Studio in L.A. for five days. Well, five nights. Well, from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. It's all about the money. Lombardo had a terrible time in the studio. Due to the cheapness of the situation, his toms and cymbals were recorded separately and the cymbals had to be dampened with towels. Lombardo was not a fan of this album for that reason. It sounds very towely. One of the roadies for the band sang backing vocals on the track Evil Has No Boundaries. 
Satan now mastering evil mayhem guides us with every first step. Scoodly boo bop ba ba choo cha choo choo ba ba. Get out of the booth, Gene. A roadie singing backup vocals by itself wouldn't really be worth mentioning, except that roadie went on to become Gene Hoglan. Who is that? Gene Hoglan has played drums for Dark Angel, Death, Testament, Devon Townsend, Strapping Young Lad and Fear Factory, just to name a few. Hoglan has played on nearly 60 albums. That's a Hoglan is the Genghis Khan of metal. Every band today has 2% Gene Hoglan in their DNA. Gross! The music was fast and heavy, as you would expect. The band themselves have likened their early sound to the new wave of British heavy metal. We're like Venom or Judas Priest, but with Towley drums. King identifies as an anti-theist and has said of his lyrics... I don't really have a life philosophy. My thing is just rebelling against pretty much organized religion. That is my main thing, because personally, I think it's a crutch for people that are too weak to get through the life on their own. I go for the free wine. I stay for the guilt. King also seems to have been the main driving force behind the use of satanic imagery. That's why he's my favorite. Catholic raised Uriah is so secure in his own beliefs, he's not particularly concerned about singing satanic songs. You're gonna burn in hell for those songs you sing! Singing little ditties about the devil is the least of my sins. When asked about being presented with King's satanic lyrics, Uriah has said... I'm not one that's going to go, this sucks because it's contrary to my beliefs. To me, it's more like, uh, this is really good stuff. You're going to piss people off with this. Translation, when you hear evil lyrics, Tom hears dollar signs. Six of the ten songs on... Show no mercy, mercy, mercy. Mention Satan. On Venom's debut, Welcome to Hell, which we discussed in the episode titled Welcome to Hell, they only name-checked Satan on four songs out of ten. Slayer out-Satan'd Venom. Slayer, now with 50% more Satan than Venom. The album cover had a sword-wielding minotaur and the Slayer logo inside a pentagram made out of swords. Minotaurs, pentagrams, and swords. No wonder teenaged boys everywhere lost their minds. The Slayer logo was designed by Lombardo, who held a pencil in his wrong hand and scrawled to look like it had been done by a knife. He did a surprisingly good job for his first time. Dave, can I get an autograph? Sure. Do you have a knife? The Minotaur was painted by freelance artist Lawrence R. Reed, whose son Kevin was a roadie for the band. Please stand by for a public service announcement. If you were a father in Huntington, California in the 1980s, there is a non-zero probability you helped Slayer make their debut album, Show No Mercy. The satanic imagery and lyrics had exactly the result the boys were looking for. The morally conservative lobby group fronted by Al Gore's wife Tipper, the Parents Music Resource Centre, sent the boys a letter. Dear Slayer, please stop what you're doing. I don't like it. Love and kisses... Tipper. P.S. Stop it. You, you, you're so naughty. You naughty, hairy, dirty, fur, filthy, foul mouthed, sweaty, young, hairy man. Oh, God, please stop it. Gross. With an album out just in time for Christmas, the band loaded their equipment into a U-Haul trailer attached to the back of Araya's Camaro. That's a sweet ride. And hit the road without a tour manager. Foreshadowing. Standing in line for the very first show of that national tour was grocery store employee Doug Goodman. Clean up on aisle 666. Doug, that's you. Me? It's always you, Doug. Doug knew his destiny was not the retail sector. He knew he was meant for something more exciting, and when he saw that Camaro... That's a sweet ride. ...filled with four long-haired, disreputable types towing a U-Haul, Doug knew what he had to do. Totally inappropriate guitar solo! He responsibly applied for time off at his job. 
I need some time off. What if we need a clean up in one of the aisles? Someone else can handle it. And Goodman joins Slayer on the road. Clean up all 666. Someone else, that's you. Someone else? Mandy, where's someone else? Are they on their break? Goodman went on to become a professional tour manager and has been around the world with the likes of Smashing Pumpkins, Ben Folds 5, Jewel, Steve Earle, Beck and Green Day. Clean up and tour bus 666. Doug, that's you. Guitarist Jeff Hanneman said, We were barely making enough money to sustain ourselves on that first tour. It was like beer, food and gas. And that's it. Tom's brother was only like 13 or 14 then. I used to make him drink beer. Please, Mr. Hanneman, don't make me drink any more beer. It hurts me, Tommy. Don't worry, little Johnny Araya grew up just fine. He plays bass in the melodic death metal outfit Thine Eyes Bleed. I like how you equate melodic death metal to mentally just fine. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just pointing it out as yet another way you are completely alone on this planet. With so many dads and random retail staff putting in the hard yards to help this band, the Slayer story is surprisingly wholesome. Show no mercy, the Slayer story, coming to Hallmark this December. Despite the fact that the album was recorded in a hurry and on the cheap, it went on to become Metal Blade's biggest selling album at the time. Hey, Dad, our album is a hit. Oh, that's awesome. So you'll be able to pay back that money you owe me. Oh, Dad, you're so funny. That was a dad loan. As you can imagine, and as we have discussed in the past with Black Sabbath and Venom's underfunded, quickly recorded debut albums, the music critics at the time mostly hated it. Turn it off! Turn it off! (laughs) So that's a no, then? I don't know. Play it again. I did find this very positive review from Metal Forces magazine, issue number three in 1984, written by the magazine's founder, editor, and let's face it, probably only reporter at the time, Bernard Doe, who gave it nine out of ten. Satanic metal, power metal, call it what you like. This is just fucking excellent. I think Doe liked it. Hey, Bernard, how's the salad? Rocket. Arugula, call it what you like. This is just fucking excellent. All right, calm down there, hype man. It's just a salad. A 14-year-old system of a downs, Darren Malachine, took a cassette of Show No Mercy with him on a visit to Iraq and claims... I might have been the first person to take heavy metal to Iraq. I can't prove that. But they had no clue what heavy metal was in 1989 in Baghdad. Most of the music in this episode was provided by the genuine beats of joy. You don't have to be the first person to introduce them to Baghdad. Just check them out on YouTube or visit satanismysuperhero.com If you love to swear and you love to fuck, then there's nothing wrong with me. If you love to swear and you love to fuck, then be my cup of tea. What have we learned from? Show no mercy. 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 In the same way it takes a village to raise a child, it really helps to have a network of family and friends supporting, believing in, and loving even the loudest, long-haired, tattooed, Satan-screaming metalhead. Dad, I can't hear myself through the stage monitors. More lead on the foldback, please. I think it only fitting that on this anti-theist podcast, we let our representative in Slayer, Kerry King, have the last word. I don't believe in any kind of religion. It's all as dumb as can be. And that's why Satan is my superhero. If you've enjoyed this episode, rate, review, subscribe, you know the deal. But please do go check out the website, satanismysuperhero.com, where you will find links to the merch store, our Patreon page, and all our social media. So cool. I want to be cool. I want to be cool.